at this morning's press briefing are ACP Jessamon Prince, who is in charge of operations, Superintendent Randy Connott of the Traffic Division, and Superintendent Vanny Cohen of the Community Relations Department. Superintendent Cohen, I turn over to you. Thank you very much, Philo, and good morning to all, and welcome to this morning press brief. As indicated, we already identified, so there's no need for me to identify the team that is with me. I'm going to just give you the uh, organizational planning for how we're going to do the press brief this morning. First, we're going to start with Assistant Commissioner Jasmine Prince, who is going to give an overview of our operational planning going forward for the rest of the, the the, the regulation up to the 20th. Then Superintendent Randy Connaught in charge of traffic and transport will give us some traffic information as to how we are going to police those banking days and those vending days. And I will come at the end and just reiterate some of the points that the Prime Minister made yesterday and to give some details for each of the days that we will be out for the rest of this week. So to Superintendent, to Assistant Commissioner Prince, I now hand over to you, sir. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Superintendent Cohen, and let me take the opportunity to greet the uh, press secretary and members of the media, um, and also to greet the general public, fellow officers who are in the field at this point in time. I just want to begin by saying here this morning that the RGPF is extremely grateful to the Almighty God for keeping our city, and may I say, not just our city, but our entire country, including Karakou and Piti Matnik. We could have been in a worse of situation, but as, we, as the scripture tells us, except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman watch it, but in vain. And this morning, we really want to give God the glory and honor and praise for keeping our city. Because I don't think within ourselves as an organization that we had all that it required to keep the city. And having said that, I also want to say a special thank you and, uh, and, and to express appreciation to members of the public for supporting our plans or operations within the last 14 days. I know it was difficult because this, these are new territories that we are uh, into, and it is very uncomfortable for many, many persons. But from what we've seen happening in the last 14 days, we feel comfortable that our, our citizens, our nationals, are, are well-thinking persons, are, are, are persons with understanding. While there are few among us who are continuing to behave in such a way that they do not understand what is going on. But we believe that the vast majority of us are fully aware of what is going on and are cooperating as much as possible. So that we want to appreciate you and thank you for that. I also want to take a, the opportunity to uh, emulate the members of the Royal Grenada Police Force who have been out in the field day and night trying to maintain and to keep things in order. And uh, to them, I want to say hats off to you. You have done well. Uh, the task has just begun. We are continuing this, and we are praying and hoping that we will be able to stand strong at the end of the day. So in the coming days, uh, as we would have understood the pronouncement of the Prime Minister. We also heard from our Commissioner some of the things that we are going to be doing in the coming days. Uh, we are hoping that persons will again give the support that they need to give in order to make this uh, successful. Uh, we are going to see uh, a lot of more activities on the streets. Uh, again, we are asking persons to confine themselves to the regulation as it relates to the border uh, crossing or the parish border crossing. We want to ask persons to remain in the parish as much as possible to do the activities there. Um, again, to understand that where we came from, we came from a lot of restriction and as the time progressed, the restriction were lifted and lifted and lifted to the point where we are now where more uh, are happening in our country. So we want to ask persons to cooperate with us. There will be a lot of police officers on the ground trying to get people to do the right thing. We're asking you to work and cooperate with us as best as possible. Uh, what we've seen happening from the period of the uh, um, pronouncement of this limited state of emergency, we've seen quite a bit of uh, offenses or crimes occurring in, in, in the property 
uh, in the area of property crime. For the period of March 23rd to um, this present time, March 13th, sorry, April 13th, we've seen uh, a total of 52 reported crimes, out of which 39 of those are property crimes. Um, we are again appealing to persons to ensure that they take every step to keep their property safe and secured. Um, and again, we are asking persons to uh, confine themselves to their homes and avoid being on the streets when you are not allowed to be on the streets so that at least we can see this next few days uh, free of any of those type, type of crimes. We are going to be looking for the perpetrators, those persons who are deliberate in breaking the curfew, those people who are deliberate in going against the regulation as much as possible. They have been, many of them have been arrested and, and charged, uh, and we will see that operational intent increase as we go along um, in the period that is ahead of us. Um, there's not much I want to say uh, in, 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 in this opening, but to allow for whatever question that you might have uh, subsequent to this. So at this time, I hand over back to Mr. Cohen. Thank you, ECP Prince. I would now hand you over to Superintendent Connett, who will give us some traffic um, regulations that will go into effect for this week to give effect to the additional shopping days that we have been given. Thank you very much, um, Superintendent Cowen, and I want to take this opportunity also to um, bid pleasant good morning to our press secretary, members of the media, and of course, my colleague officers out there in the trenches who have been soldiering along um, together with um, the emergency services workers, especially hospital and emergency care. So a pleasant good morning to all. My responsibility here this morning is to give a general overview as to our traffic arrangement for the upcoming days. But to put this into context, I think it is imperative that I, I lay some of the foundation measures. Of course, ACP Prince have already alluded to the fact of the relaxing of some of the regulations. And come with the relaxing of regulations um, would bring upon uh, more traffic along the public roadway. And that is where we come in. So in as much as it is a piece to members of the public, now the task is at hand for officers of the traffic department. But before I get into this, I must take the opportunity to really commend the members of the general public who have been um, assisting greatly with the operations on traffic management and, and adhering to the regulations and the directives given by police officers posted at the various points or even at the gas station um, when they come to fuel up. And this has significantly impacted on our, our ability to be effective and also with the application of um, the deployment of the motor vehicle apps, we are able to ensure that only persons who are qualified to access pumps on particular days are indeed those persons arriving and having access to those fuel, the fuel days. We have also responded to the concerns of vehicle owners, and especially during this period, or what we normally call the licensing period, because um, with the advent of the curfew period and the emergency regulations, we had to suspend our motor vehicle inspection, and that significantly impacted upon a number of persons who, for, during the second period, was unable to have their motor vehicles inspected. What we have since done is to allow for these individuals to continue driving their motor vehicle, albeit, albeit it is not yet inspected and the vehicle is not yet in, um, licensed for that period. And we have since um, been in communication with the Accountant General and the, to ensure that um, those payments can be made at a subsequent date. But that must be done considering the fact that we have already suspended the period. It gives us now the opportunity to extend that period to afford for the inspection of those vehicles. Um, once this um, present situation is lifted, we'll extend the period to allow for those vehicles to be inspected and the necessary payments can be made at the Treasury or District Revenue Offices. Another critical factor that was brought to our attention, and we have been deliberating upon that, is the whole issue of vehicle insurance. And as we speak today, um, there is some arrangement um, with the insurance companies um, where they 
clients can call in because we have to look at the risk involved. And that is a principal factor here, the risk involved should in case someone, a vehicle insurance is expired and he or she gets into an accident. So we had those discussions with the insurance companies and they're open and, be, and they are accessible to their clients who can call in an arrangement can be made for uh, an extension of their insurance. But that is a one-on-one -on -one between the client and the, the particular insurance company because insurance company to company, the, the arrangements might be slightly different. And they would be able to speak and give a little more clarity on that particular issue. But that is a, an arrangement that is in place. So we want persons to take advantage um, of this window of opportunity to, and to engage your company because you have to ensure that you're covered for those risks that are involved in driving. Just before coming to this meeting, we were able to finalize the whole issue of um, persons whose driver's license this time um, during the period of the, COVID, the emergency regulations has been expired. And a number of persons have been calling in. So it's just a portion of persons who, from the time of the emergency regulation to present, these persons have been affected. And what is in place now is to ensure that uh, the district revenue office is open to facilitate the payments. And there is a provision here that on Thursday, and Friday of this week, from 9 a.m. to midday, the revenue offices would be open to facilitate the payment of driver's license only. With this in mind, persons who have been issued with an official receipt would normally have to carry it from henceforth along with the expired driver's license. So we, we would call that receipt a counterpart to your driver's license because it is impossible at this stage to have your driver's license renewed and a new ID reprinted. So you would use the receipt along with your expired driver's license and that is how you would be able to access, um, well, be legitimized, so to speak, on the road. But I want to pedal back here just a little bit because there was a critical point that I needed to raise regarding the insurance certificates. Now once it is agreed upon by the insurance company to issue a renewal of certificate, it would be done electronically. And our officers are, are mandated or directed by commissioner to accept those electronic copies which persons would have on their, their devices, cell phones, iPads, whatever. And we are to recognize that, but this would be cross-referenced with the list of information that is provided by the insurance companies. So I just want to make that point clear. You, upon receipt of your insurance renewal, would only be able to receive it el electronically and the police will recognize the electronic copy. So I just want that to be understood clearly. The most challenging period for us at the traffic department would be on those designated banking days and where groceries would also be sold. Uh, Mr. Coyd made mention of um, the, the special market days, but um, I don't think we have selected um, areas where those sales would be done. So our traffic management plan would take that into consideration also. But for the special banking days, we, we recognize uh, uh, the humongous challenge that would be upon the police to ensure that there is astute traffic management protocols in place. And this is where the traffic department comes in. I've had some preliminary discussions with my senior staff and already for the tongue of St. George, areas normally declared no parking, we would facilitate parking in some of these areas. And this would be subject to the direction of officers who would be posted in those particular areas to allow for those things to happen. Because no vehicle, hiring vehicle would be in operation, hiring cars or taxis or omnibuses, um, where we had the taxi stands, those areas too would be utilized for parking of vehicles. The challenge would be the queues that would be extended outside of those banks, those establishments, um, and even MoneyGrams and, and the, I think Credit Union also. So that is the, the critical area that we have to focus on. And for Church Street, we realize this place is a unique challenge to have motor vehicles traversing along that street. And then you have the Cooperative Bank and also First Caribbean Bank in that area. The decision is to close Lower Church Street from its intersection with um, Upper Lucas Street and Market Hill. So no vehicles with the exception of banking officials would be able to make that left turn into the lower section of Church Street on the banking days. We do encourage persons who have to come to access the facilities to ensure that you come early, you secure your parking. Um, 
you act in a business-like manner, you do the transaction and avoid lingering around uh, aimlessly because it, the, the concession that is granted is for you to conduct business on those particular days. And we want to ensure that there is a smooth transition and we cannot accomplish that without cooperation from members of the public. But you have been doing well thus far and we do look forward with great anticipation for your continued support. So the taxi stands, as I indicated, would be utilized on designated areas designated, no parking. Some of those would be eased, so at least we'll provide some additional parking facility. Because as it stands, I, I am not too clear as to whether or not pub, um, private parking areas uh, at the malls or otherwise would be open. So in the absence of this information, we want to make sure that we have sufficient parking on the streets available for individuals who um, are trying to access banking services on those banking days. Now, the queues coming out of the First Caribbean and Grenada Cooperative Bank, um, we, do a, we, we, are in, we have intended to, to line them along the street. Each bank would have a separate queue along uh, an uh, particular side of the road. And we trust that um, this distancing protocol would be observed because not only our traffic management responsibility that we will be looking towards, we'll be ensuring that the other protocols relative to these emergency regulations are, are maintained at all times. Um, other traffic related matters, um, as it would relate to the special market days, when those areas uh, for vending are declared, we would again bring to the attention of the general public the arrangements that are in place for those special um, vending days. But as I said before, it is going to be a very humongous task for officers attached to the traffic department. We have been rising to the occasion um, with the support of the general public, and we do look forward with great anticipation for another smooth operation. Um, we have been tested, tried, and um, I, I dare say certified by this time. And we're looking forward again to accomplishing our task um, with, with, with great success come this weekend, come, well, the latter part of this weekend, into the weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Superintendent Connett. Now I'm going to give you some overview of uh, what will go into place this week as it relates to shopping. In my presentation, I will reiterate most of what the Prime Minister has said yesterday, but will give some details as to how we're going to operationalize those events or those activities that he mentioned. So I'm going to start by reiterating what was said, and at the end of my presentation, I will give some more details on each particular day and what and how it will unfold, after which we will be open at, for your questions. Um, first, let me start with shopping. As indicated by the Prime Minister yesterday, today Carico is having a shopping day. Today being Tuesday, the 14th of April, Carico is having a shopping day. Carico will again shop on Thursday, the 16th, Friday, the 17th, and Saturday, the 18th. That's for Carico. Shopping days for Grenada will, in, will be Thursday, the 16th, Friday, the 17th, and Saturday, the 18th. Instructive though, is that going forward, with the exception of today, every day that is announced as a shopping day for Grenada will also be for Grenada, Carico, and Pity Matnik. I, I, I want to make this point abundantly clear because there seems to be some confusion as it relates to how those shopping days are being rolled out separately. So with the exception of this morning, with the exception of today, that Carico is having a shopping day, every shopping day that is announced going forward will be for the tri-island state of Grenada, Carico, and Pity Martinique. So Carico is shopping today. They again will shop Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with the rest of the mainland. That's Carico and Pity Martinique. What is new going forward is the fact that we have now been able to establish a special shopping day for essential workers. So starting this Wednesday, Essential workers, and I want to clarify the term here, essential workers for this particular shopping day includes doctors, nurses, and police officers. So this Wednesday, doctors, nurses, and police officers will be allowed to shop at Calico Shopping Center, at Guove, Certes, and Grenville from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Additionally, on Sunday, the 19th of April, the same sector 
of the essential services workers, doctors, nurses, and police officers, will also have the privilege and opportunity to shop at the real value IGA supermarket from the same 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. So I want to take this, this, this again to make sure it is abundantly clear. We have now established a new shopping day for essential workers, namely police officers, doctors, and nurses. Starting this Wednesday, the 15th, this class of essential workers will have the privilege to shop at Calico Shopping Center in Grenville, Guove, and Sotez from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And on Sunday, the 19th, at the Real Value IGA Supermarket from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Supplies and distribution continue today, Tuesday, the 14th, tomorrow, Wednesday, the 15th, and Thursday, the 16th. You would notice that there is an extension of the supplies and distribution by one day. It was two days before, now it is three. I'll give some explanation as I drill down into the details. Banks, credit unions, MoneyGram, Western Union, and Building and Loan will be open from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Thursday, the 16th, and Friday, the 17th of this week. All gas stations will be open from 6 a.m. to noon to serve essential workers and other businesses that are allowed to open during that period, the management and staff of those other businesses. Farmers and fishermen, and as the Prime Minister indicated yesterday, that has been a turning issue in the past, and so some relief is coming to farmers and fishermen as we go forward. Farmers and fishermen will be able to apply the trade on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of this week, which is the same sh uh, shopping day for everyone. I will now give you some details as to how these particular activities are going to unfold. I spoke of essential workers having a special shopping day. And I know the question will be asked as what would happen to other form of essential workers, Nawasa, Green Lake, and other frontline workers. We will maintain the essential services line at uh, supermarkets and grocery store for frontline workers only. And I want to make that point clearly because we've had some confusion in the past as to who constitute a frontline worker. And I, on a program before, I explained the difference between essential services and essential workers of essential services. There are several essential services on the island, but they are essential workers of those essential services. And let me make the point clear here. When we speak of essential workers here, we're speaking about frontline workers. So you may be part of an essential service. Green Lake, for example, you may be an employee of Green Lake, but you're home, you're operating remotely. You may be a cashier. You're not called out, you're home. You're not considered a frontline worker for the purpose of shopping. So we ask that you join the regular shopping line and not the line that constitute essential workers. Okay, I've explained that before and I thought it is important for me to explain this here again this morning. Another public fueling day is being considered for the general public. At some point during this week or going forward, we will announce what day that will be. We have had a public fueling day last week, and again, another public fueling day will be announced as we go forward. I indicated earlier that supply days, supply and distribution days are uh, extended by one day. And the purpose for that is to ensure that the necessary supplies get to the village shops. Because we have had uh, several concerns and several complaints that the distributors are not reaching the, the, the villages that are way out of mainstream. And that the focus was on supplying supermarkets and the, the, and the bigger shops. But we want to ensure that all Grenadians are fed. All Grenadians have the, uh, an opportunity to be able to shop and therefore Supply and distribution days are extended by one day to include to ensure that these shops are reached and they can be restocked. I want to reiterate here at this point that there is no shortage of food on the island, and so there, are, there is no need for rush. There is no shortage of food on the island, and there is no need for panic buying or for rushing as we have seen last week and the week before. Going forward, there will be a minimum of two to three shopping days of every week. Going forward, there will be a minimum of two to three shopping days of every week once the situations conti continue to stabilize as it is now. It is important for me to say that because that two to three shopping days can change 
back to one shopping day if we reverse the gains that we have made in terms of controlling the spread of these diseases. And therefore, members of the public are urged to please follow and maintain all of the protocols that have been put in place to ensure that we stay safe and that we prevent community spread of these diseases, meaning continue to wear your mask, Continue to regard and respect the physical distancing protocol, both for individuals and for businesses, and continue to adhere to the curfew. I want to make this point here clear. Notwithstanding what you may get out of the press brief from the Prime Minister yesterday, the curfew remains in force. Some restrictions have been relaxed because of the gains, as I indicated, that we have made. But for all intents and purposes, the status quo remains the same. Curfew remains in effect. When we started this, this journey, this process, we had one shopping day. And then we moved to two shopping days. And now we are to three shopping days. That's an indication that things are improving and improving rapidly. But to ensure that we continue those three shopping days and perhaps extend it going forward will depend on how we all respond and react to the measures that are put in place to keep us safe. It, that will determine whether or not we continue to adhere and obey the protocols that has been established in ensuring that we do not contribute to community spread of the virus. The focus for farmers in this period is concentrated on consumer level produce, and we want to make that clear. In this particular period, we're talking about farmers plying their trade, and particularly here we're referring to farmers who sell produce, perishables, consumer level produce, um, your, your cabbage, your carrot, your sweet potatoes, etc., and not necessarily the nutmeg farmers or those other farmers. Consideration is being given to establishing farm markets, and that is how the, the, the farmers are going to apply the trade for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of this week. Um, consideration is being given to farmers' market by parishes. So uh, you need to stay in your parish to be able to, to vend for this week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Locations, locations have already been identified. There are just some logistical issues that need to put in place, but it is already approved that Vendors will be able to vend Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of this week, and it will be done by farmer's market in the different parishes. By Wednesday of this week, we will be able to inform and update the nation as to what logistics um, will go in place to ensure that that happens. The specific arrangement for fishermen is currently being fleshed out, and again, by Wednesday, we will be able to provide some more details as to how that is going to roll out. And, and um, I do not want to leave the, the population in doubt as to what I'm talking about here. Because we are asked to adhere to certain protocols, distancing protocol, etc., it cannot be business as usual where five and six fishermen will go out in a boat to fish. And these are the kind of logistical issues that need to be determined, and this is the kind of information we will get back to you as to how it's going to be done. But fishermen and farmers are allowed to ply the trade Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of this week. But we will get back to you when in regarding some of the details of how it's going to be done. As it relates to gas, I know I indicated when the gas days are going to be. Uh, we have had some difficulties in the past as to who can receive gas and how gas can be obtained. And in our last press brief, we indicated that farmers who have irrigation pumps to service will be allowed to receive gas in appropriate gas bottles, and this will continue. So gas is not only for the vehicles, but gas is also for gas bottles for farmers who have irrigation pumps that they need to service to have up and running to ensure that they can irrigate their fields so that they can continue to produce the vital um, and essential supplies that we all need. On the shopping days for Caricou and Pity Martinique, uh, two boats will be provided to convey residents of Caricou, sorry, residents of Pity Martinique into Caricou to ensure that they can do their shopping. And I, I, I want to reiterate that. Um, on the days for shopping for Grenada, Caricou, and Pity Martinique, residents of Pity Martinique, two boats will be provided for you to ensure that you can be conveyed to Caricou for the purpose of shopping. We have made significant gains in the last few weeks. We have started 
with a very uncertain situation where we have had several arrests of people violating the curfew and violating other aspects of the Emergency Powers Act. We are now seeing some relax and some relieved, and so we implore you, the members of the public, for us to continue to have those shopping days extended, for us to continue to ensure that banking services remain on a weekly basis, to ensure that fishermen and farmers can continue to ply the trade going forward. It will depend on all of us obeying and abiding with the protocols that are put in place. We have improved, there have been improvement, but we are not there yet. We are not out of the woods. These are measures that are put in place to ease the restrictions because of how well we have been doing as a nation, how cooperative you have been as a people. And we wanna thank the members of the public as ACP Prince has indicated, you have been tremendous. In the last couple of weeks, your members of the public has been tremendous. We thank you for your call. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your understanding. It has not been business as usual, and you bear with us. Notwithstanding the strain and stress we all endured, I think it was for a good cause. It was for a worthy cause. And because of those sacrifices you have made then, we can see those restrictions now being relaxed. So I want to thank you again, and I look forward to your continued cooperation as we continue the struggle. As I indicated, we are not there yet, but we are getting there. So let us continue as a nation to support the health professionals, support the RGPF in the efforts to ensure that we remain safe. May God bless you, and we will now take your questions, members of the media. Thank you very much, uh, Superintendent Cohen. I think we already have a question in the queue. Mikey Hutchinson. Good morning to the panel. Good morning to media colleagues. Um, my first, first question has to do with the shopping. I know in the la on the last shopping days, we had uh, a shopping sequence by Alphabet. I would like to know if that remains for these shopping days to come. Question, Mr. Hutchinson, and I should have mentioned um, mentioned this. I indicated when that sequencing was uh, announced that it was an experiment that we were experimenting with. It was the first time we had to introduce this. It was the first time we had uh, measures like that, and it was an experimental or a trial phase. Um, re we have reviewed it, and because of 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 um, where we are now. An extra day or days were given for shopping. And so there is no need for us to continue the sequencing that we have started. So on those three days, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, it will be open shopping for all. There will be no sequencing going forward. Um, I have another question, if you may permit me. Um, with regards to persons accessing the banks and so on, I know that there are some banks that are limited to particular locations, for example, within the city. Say someone lives in an outer parish, will they be allowed to cross the borders? And if so, what will be required to so do? Okay, um, that was a question that came up some time ago. And the question is that persons will, uh, as much as possible, remain in the, in the parish. Um, we understand that this is not going to be something that will be there for a long time. Uh, um, we are asking persons to just hold as we continue to uh, ease on the on the on the regulations. Um, so if you are in the parish uh, or outer parish and you have a check that only can be cashed in the in the city, we are asking you just to hold a bit. If your bank could change it for you um, and there's an arrangement with you, I know they have the the stipulation of a three day uh, clearance. Um, if they can work that out with you and and change for you, um, that's fine. But we're asking persons to hold on for a little bit longer. I don't think it's very long from now when all of these restrictions will be relieved so that we would have that border movement um, free and, and open up to all. But for now, uh, the answer is that you will remain in your community or in your parish as much as possible until that is lifted. Let me chime in here to indicate something I've said before, that not all services will be available in the banks that are going to be opened. Not all banking services that will be available. And to drill down a little more into the, into the answer to the question that you've asked, Mikey, um, there will be a limited parish crossing to be able to access certain services. You would appreciate that there is no bank 
in St. David's and there is no bank in St. Mark's. And so the residents of St. David's are allowed to cross into St. George's to be able to do the banking business. And the residents of uh, St. Mark's are able to uh, cross boundary into St. Patrick's and St. John's to be able to do that. The other parishes will have to do the banking within the parish. Okay, so not all services will be available, but as the restrictions continue to ease and as we continue to improve, we will see the opening up of the banking sector to be able to accommodate all form of banking and all banking services. We are not there yet with those. There is a question from Linda Stricker inquiring about uh, the stats for curfew violations and um offenses apart from the property offenses? Um, okay, I'd, I'd have to get back to you on the actual detail of the, all the offenses, but we do have the stats and um, that can be made available to you at a later date. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Superintendent? Sorry, I think um, Superintendent Corwin would have uh, obtained some of that information, so I'll ask him to share them now. We have not crunch all of the numbers from the time we have started. But we have been giving update day by day in the past as to where we are in terms of the arrests that we have had. Now, from the 6th of April to today's date, which is the, the new phase that we are under, um, there are some stats that, that we're able to put together. For instance, um, coffee violation, we had 67, and that's from the 6th to today, 67. Violation of the mask, not wearing a mask in public, there was one. Violation of physical distancing, nine. Operating a non-essential business, four. And by that I mean businesses that were not allowed to open, that were open, there was four. Drinking in a public place, there was one. And grocery selling outside of the time designated for selling, there was one. So in total, there was 106 arrests. And it is inclusive of the figures that I've given you. If you add all what I've given you, it will not among to 106. 106 is the total arrest. Those are just some of the, the stats that we've just pulled out just to be able to give the public an indication as to what happened from the 6th to today's date. Thank you very much, Superintendent Cohen. Um, Superintendent Connaught, there is a question about uh, traffic regulations for the other parishes. Okay, very good question indeed. And I just want to hasten to say that the arrangements for traffic regulations at the other parishes would fall under the portfolio of the divisional commander, but similar, similar arrangements would be made to ensure that there's a smooth flow of traffic, adequate parking facility, and um, to ensure that there is an ease for which uh, that is required around this particular time because it's a limited window for banking services because the times are from 9, 9 a.m. to 12 noon. And the police um, command within the respective divisions would also make adequate parking arrangements to ensure that the, the no parking areas um, that were normally enforced can be uh, relaxed so as to allow for parking to be done in those specific areas, but guided under the direction of a police officer. Thank you very much, Superintendent. Uh, there's another question here from Chrislyn Lashington of Power FM. Have we noticed that crimes committed um, within the homes, uh, I guess she's speaking here about uh, domestic violence, and what uh, reassurance can the police give that these are being taken seriously? Um, if I could answer this, uh, what we've seen is that a very minimal uh, amount of crime reported as from the domestic violence um, um, side of, of things. Um, we believe that with the family being at home, with, with persons being at home, it, it, it actually provides for um, maybe better resolution, resolution of differences and, and, and so forth, because you don't have any place else to go but to be at home. So there is a, a quick, probably a quick action in resolving issues than causing them to escalate to the extent where it has to be, then be reported to the police. Um, so we believe that that confinement to the home is actually providing the, the sort of environment where things can be resolved easily among, um, among families. So we have not seen a lot of reports coming in f um, in relation to domestic violence and even sexual offenses and so forth. The majority of the, of the crimes that has occurred during that period of time are those of property crime to it, um, housebreaking and stealing. And that is again something that we are kind of concerned about because uh, 
of course, there may be quite a number of persons prowling around and looking for opportunities uh, to the areas that are vulnerable. And some of these properties we are seeing that are vandalized or that have been um, broken into are some of the smaller shops and so on. And the things, the items that are stolen are sometimes food items like, uh, you know, and, and alcohol and stuff like that that has been stolen. So there is that concern there that we are appealing to some of the small business owners to ensure and do as best you can to secure your property, um, you know, in the best way that you could. Um, opportunities are given from time to time when persons make the request so they can go and look at the property over a period of time and ensure that everything is secured and so on. So we give um, permission for persons to move to check on the properties from time to time. So we're asking again that you continue to do that um, to make sure that your property remain safe and not a target of opportunity. Uh, ACP Prince, there was a follow-up to the domestic violence um, question. Um, it is that, can it be that victims probably do not feel comfortable reporting during this time? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, uh, we've had, except that there are some matters that, have, that people know of and they uh, realize that it has not been reported. We would like to know what they are and certainly we'd like to uh, intervene and deal with it. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't want to agree that uh, persons are fearful of reporting. That has not been the case uh, with us in the past, and certainly now it would probably even be better to get that person who is the perpetrator out of the environment so that the other parties can be safe. Now, if you're saying that persons are fearful of reporting a matter in a domestic situation because of fear that uh, the person who is the perpetrator can become more aggressive, maybe after or in you know, a long term after prosecution and all of that, then maybe that could be a, a factor. But certainly it's not a factor of failing to report because the police will not act or, or any such thing like that. I think any matter, um, as we've had in the past, the police is very aggressive in dealing with domestic violence. And once they come to our attention, they will be dealt with aggressively as any other matter. Thank you very much, ACP. I think we have a question from Sherry Anwell. Sherry Ann? Um, good morning. The first question I have is a follow-up to Mike e. Hutchinson's question as it relates to crossing borders. Um, uh, Superintendent Cohen, you would have mentioned that there aren't any banks in St. Mark and so. But what about the people who have accounts in the Republican RBTT, which only has one branch, and that is in Grand Dance? How do you plan to deal with that to get so that they can get to the bank? That's part one of my questions. As we said before, uh, we want to maintain the status quo of the border crossing as much as possible. We understand and we've seen that over the period of time that many of the regulations have been lifted. And we believe that we are not very far away from lifting all the regulations as it relates to border, border crossing. What we do not want to do is to jump too quick to do something and then later on we have to regret it. So we are asking, and that's why we are asking persons, yes, we understand that you will need uh, the, fu the funds from a, a, an institution that you are far away from. Um, we understand that. Uh, and we are asking you just to hold on a little bit longer so that at least uh, we can get through this, uh, thus giving us the opportunity to lift all the regulation and allowing people to move freely to conduct their business. I'm asking it for um, some doc um, members who consider themselves as the doc workers. Um, they're saying that they would like to know, they would like you to clarify whether or not they are considered essential workers because they are experiencing difficulties when they try to utilize the service on, on, on shopping days. That's for the doc workers. We consider them stevedores and so. Thank you for the question. And um, let us... If you go back to the regulations, you'd see where, where it defines essential workers. And there's a listing there, um, a long list of essential workers there. But you also see a proviso there where the commissioner of police uh, can actually um, s certify any group of person or uh, person's individual to become or to be made into a, an essential worker. And once you are recognized, by the Commission of Police or certified by the Commission of Police as an essential worker, then you are, you are an essential worker, despite of what sector you might come from. Um, and it is clear that the stevedores who are authorized to operate during the 
the restricted periods um, are essential workers because they have been given the, the permission or the, the author authorization by the Commission of Police to do so. So yes, stevedores and all the workers who are engaged in, in, in work, uh, especially on the port, um, the customs, the, the nurses, the, the doctors, the, all the persons who are actually engaged in work at that time, because they are certified by the Commission of Police under essential workers provision, then they are, they are considered essential worker. So you'd, you'd probably be happy to know that the farmers are considered essential, uh, essential workers because they are being given the permission by commissioner under the same sec, uh, regulation seven to do so, yeah? Thank you, ACP. Um, Nancy Maguire. This week to buy their trade. And I'm wondering if by apply their trade, you mean marketing their produce, or does that also mean going to their farms and more? Okay, um, I think. Uh, we, I didn't get the first part of your question, but I want to believe that you're asking about the farmers being given the opportunity to ply their trade. And you're asking whether or not plying their trade meaning also to sell the products and go to the farm. Well, of course, um, what we know is that um, already the provision has been made for farmers to go to their farms. And I think the farmers have been given the authorization to go to their farms every day of the week. Um, I think from zero six hundred hours to nine or twelve o'clock every day, they can go to their farms. Um, uh, and now the discussion is about giving the farmers now an opportunity to supply their produce. And, and well, let me just back up, backtrack a little bit because the supplying of the produce has been happening. Farmers have been uh, supplying the produce to marketing board and other other institutions, um, supermarkets, and so on during the days of supply. I think the discussion now is about providing an, a, a, an opportunity for farmers themselves to bring their produce, produce or, or to make their produce available to the general public in, in that kind of sense. And so that is where the discussion is now where uh, maybe some sort of setting up can be done, whether it is a, a farmer's market, if you want to call it that, in an environment that would be able to uh, cater for the safe distancing or the, the, the physical distancing protocol and all of the, the protocols that can be observed, uh, but certainly we would not see the vending on the side of the road. We also want to see the, the farmers, uh, those who are in the communities and have established stalls in the communities where they usually sell the produce. That again, we're looking at the possibility of those being activated and persons being able to, to sell the produce there. But what we do not want, and we would not want to give the leeway to is uh, people going to the side of the streets with their baskets of goods to sell. Everything in going forward now will be done in an organized manner where we can establish and practice the social distancing or the physical distancing protocol and all the other protocols that are associated with it. Nancy Duyan. Nancy, do you have another question? Yes, I'm asking about veterinary services. I understand if a livestock farmer needs a veterinary service, there are emergency provisions for that because vets were not included in the initial uh, state of emergency list. Yes, and uh, we are aware of that. Um, we've been getting a lot of uh, requests from, from varying sectors for varying reasons. and. Permission has been given, passes have been issued to persons to do and uh, to go about to do these, um, these works. Um, we, we are not in the habit of just giving you an open pass to, do, to just have there uh, for when you, know, you need it. Um, this, is a control, this is a control environment that we are actually operating in and every movement has to be done and done in a way that the RGPF is aware of, of who is moving and what they are moving for when they are moving. So, uh, the um, veterinarians have the, uh, the authority to apply for a pass if a situation arise, arises. 
they have the authority to ask, uh, ask for a pass. The pass will be issued given the specific time of their movement to and from their client or if the client has to go to, the, uh, to their place of, of business, then that too will be accommodated. Nancy, I think you have one more question before we move on to the next journalist. Has there been any consideration given to opening up postal services? Uh, at this time, I cannot answer this question. That definitely would have to be from another, from the higher level, uh, um, the higher level to answer this one. I'm not in a position to answer at this time. The requests, Nancy, such as these are actually considered by the, um, our National COVID Response Committee, and they in turn will then pass uh, directions onto the Royal Grenada Police Force for the operationalization of those um, measures. So um, we can put the question to the committee, um, but as ACP um, Prince indicated, the police um, are not in a position to respond to this at this moment. Johnson Richardson, you have a question now? Thank you and good morning, good morning to, your, to your panel. Uh, my question though is, um, last week during one of your press conferences, you spoke about uh, persons in do the, doing shopping and so on, and in, the, in that line after the stipulated, after the stipulated um, deadline would be given permission to, to continue shopping. All right, until until that line next that line is, is expired. Um, I want to know though if the same opportunity will be given to persons wishing to access um, the banking services um, in that line after the one o'clock deadline uh, would have elapsed. Would they be allowed to um, to remain in that, in that line and continue to seek their, their, their service? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't think um, the banks will shut down its operation if there are persons standing in the line inside of the bank waiting to be served and the one o'clock hour strikes and they will tell everybody that is standing there oh we shut down so you know you have to get out of the bank to go i don't think the bank will do that and usually how the bank operates even under normal circumstances uh all the persons who are inside of the bank when the door is closed at the time it's supposed to close to be closed all those persons are being served so i believe um, that at the one o'clock hour, um, some sort of consultation will be done with those persons, the bank operators and the persons who are standing on the outside um, to see what sort of accommodation that can be made. And again, remember, it is two banking days. So if you didn't get solved today, you have a chance of getting solved the next day. So, um, you know, sometimes we try to rush to things because we are not certain that... Um, we would see the next day to, 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 to get to do it. Um, and maybe that might be a good way of thinking, but you know, given the circumstances, I think uh, if you didn't get solved today, then you have a chance of getting solved the next day. So don't, don't, don't feel um, disappointed to the extent that you want to create problems for the RGPF to have to come in and do something. You, know, you don't want to get there. So um, we're asking persons again to exercise patience and to work along with the institutions. They are facilitating a service, uh, work along with them, and at the end of the day, um, I'm certain that everybody will get solved. If, if I may just um, chime in here and just to in, add to what ACP Prince has said, the banks would be open for limited service only. So with limited service, um, the wide array of um, services that would normally have been provided by the banks, that would not be available. So the limited service, I believe, I would want to think, would be limited to uh, transactions uh, that you would normally do across the counter. So I think they would be quite quick or uh, expeditious in their actions inside, inside of the banks, and things would have a normal, smooth trans, um, trans transition. So there wouldn't be any clustering. I don't think we'd arrive at that position where there would be too much of a clustering because of the limited access to services at the banks. So I'm looking forward to a, a smooth day um, with, with um, limited setbacks. Thank you very much. Um, Superintendent Cohen, I think you wanted to chime in here. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I just want to go back to a part of the presentation we have made before as it relates to the special shopping days for essential services. Because the questions that we have answered before seems to suggest that doctors, nurses, and police are not the only essential services workers, and we appreciate that. But we want the public to appreciate the fact that based on the very nature and design of our operations, what we do as doctors, nurses, and police officers, the demands that are placed on us in this particular time, the uniqueness of our situation, kind of separates us a bit than the rest of the essential workers. And, and, and just bear with me here as I explain this. While everybody is shopping, while we have an emergency powers act, it has to be enforced. Who enforces it? The police. When shopping days are announced, it is the responsibility of the police force to ensure that the population shop, shop in peace, and that we provide the safety and security that they need. We cannot shop on the days that they are shopping, and it is understandable. We, we are there to ensure that peace prevail, that there is tranquility in the society, and we do not have the same time based on our operational design of the police force. The nurses and doctors are at the forefront of the fight to stem the spread of these diseases. Uh, I have spoken to nurses and doctors who have said to me that when we will do a, perhaps a six or eight hour shift, we find ourselves doing 10 and 12 because of what is being asked of us. And then to ask these people to join a line and wait to be able to receive some supplies for two, three, and four hours, personally, I think this is unfair. And I don't think we can compare the doctors, the nurses, and the police officers in the same category, in the same vein, as we would categorize other essential workers. I am not minimizing the role, function, and contribution of all essential workers. We all play our part. We all are asked to do what we need to do to ensure that we stem the tide of what is happening. But they are frontline workers in this fight. We all are workers, but they are frontline workers and they are workers who, if you take some of the essential workers out, some services of the country might be able to perform. If you take the doctors and the nurses out of the equation, what happens to testing? What happens to contact tracing? What happens to all of the, 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 the infrastructure that goes into mitigating against the spread? If you take the police officers out of the equation, what happens to law and order, safety, peace, and security? So we don't get to do what you can do. When the shopping day is announced, all other essential workers can find themselves in that line. The police officers, the doctors, and the nurses cannot easily do that. And so it becomes imperative and important for a special day to be given for these people so that they can replenish themselves with the supplies that they need to ensure that this fight continues and they continue to lead in this fight. And we must appreciate and accept that. And, and because of, of, of what I have just said, Wednesday, this week, and Sunday have been set aside for doctors, nurses, and police officers to shop. I indicated previously that Wednesday will be at Calico Shopping Center, at Grenville, Guave, and St. Patrick's, and on Sunday, Real Value IGA Supermarket in St. George will be set aside for doctors, nurses, and police to shop between eight and one. The, the other essential workers, we will continue to maintain the essential workers line on the normal shopping days for other essential workers. So we're not minimizing your contribution and taking that privilege away from you. We have just given the nurses, the doctors, and the police a little more privilege that we wouldn't necessarily have while the other essential workers do have those privileges. Thank you very much, uh, Superintendent Cohen, for adding a bit more clarity to the uh, special shopping days that have been allocated for frontline workers. We have another question here from Linda Straker. Uh, will permission be granted to exporters uh, to export fresh produce? That pass, I believe, um, she's saying was recalled. Um, are we in a position to say anything on that here? Um, not at this time. Again, I, I think that that we, that, that question probably will be best answered by the COVID uh, committee. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm at, not at a position now to say anything on that. Okay, thank you very much, ACP. Nisha Paul, I think you have a question. You may go ahead. Nisha? Nisha Paul, are you there? Okay, Rachel Bain, MTV. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. 
um, just for class. Which is it? Okay, Nisha, seeing that I called you first, you may proceed. Rachel, I'm sorry, we'll come back to you in a few. Nisha, proceed. All right, go ahead. Yes, please, Nisha, Thank go you ahead. Very much. Just for clarity on the question that was posed relating to um, the farmers and the relating to the farmers and the fishermen, is it a situation where they will be allowed? Hi, right, Nisha, we're having trouble here. To sell their produce directly. Nisha, we are having some difficulty here in your audio. Can you type your question into the chat? Nisha, I'm sorry. We had some difficulty hearing clearly what your question was. Can you please type it into the chat and I will relay the question. In the meantime, Rachel, can you proceed with your question? Um, Superintendent Cohen, I would like to know, are there any plans to have specific shopping hours for the elderly, given their obvious vulnerabilities in this pandemic? Currently, uh, there is no, that consideration um, is not available. Um, the three shopping days that are given are given to the general public. And so while we understand the, 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 the restrictions or constraints from these people, they have the same shopping days that everyone else have of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I indicated before that um, there are no shortages of food, and therefore there will be no need to rush. So I'm sure at the respective supermarkets, um, consideration will be given to them. We have set up specific lines at specific supermarkets to ensure that these people are catered for. Um, Last week and the week before, there were lines for uh, pregnant people, there were lines for ageable people, there were lines for disabled people, and so we will continue to do that, to give them the advantages over the able-bodied persons to shop. So while specific days or hours are not being set aside for them, specific lines are created to ensure that they can shop and shop in peace. Rachel, do you have another question? Yes, um, for persons with large farms that have field workers, um, would it be given to these people to, um, to work? Yes, um, we have been given permission to uh, farmers to bring their crew to the farms to work. Um, this is ongoing. Uh, but of course, you would agree that the, the farm owner or the, or the manager of the farm has to make representation on behalf of the workers because we would not know who are the workers. And this is not about um, the organization or the, or the uh, let's say, that company. It's about individual who are moving, right? The control here is about controlling the movements of individual to prevent um, the whole idea of the congregating and the disregard for social distancing. So when the owner or the manager of the farm makes representation, he, has, he or she has the responsibility to make representation for himself and the workers that are with him or her on the farm. Thank you. Rachel, is there another question from you? Yes, um, if someone wants to do work on their house for themselves without any assistance from any outside people, um, what measures are in place or can they continue doing their work within their own space for themselves? Okay, this is, a, this is a question that was raised before. I do not have the answer for this. This again has to be communicated to the COVID team. COVID team. Um, what I do know is that all construction has been ceased except it's a critical uh, uh, something critical that has to be done, like uh, a rooftop is leaking or a busted pipe or so, those a request has, has to be made, um, giving us the contractor or the person who is coming to do the work, the time that the person is going to do the work, how much time the person need, and um, some sort of facilitation will be given 
for those repairs to be done. And as I say, it has to be critical. And we have been approving uh, critical requests like plumbing and other critical uh, uh, construction work that has to be done on individuals' homes uh, so that they can have a quiet and peaceful um, rest. Uh, thank you, Rachel. Mikey, I think you have another question. But I would like to follow up on a question that um, Rachel just asked in terms of construction, because um, the officer is saying that uh, the construction um, is ceased in general. Um, can you clarify whether or not any sector of the society is allowed to do construction during this period? Uh, when you say sector, I'm not sure what, you, what you're, you're referring to. Can you clarify just a little bit? I, I just want to, I want to be very careful with, with this question because I do not want to single out any group. Right. But uh, so I am generalizing the question as to whether or not anyone, any sector of the society is allowed to do construction during this period of, uh, during this period of time. Right. I'm not sure if, if I could, if I would uh, say a sector. What I can say is that a request has been made, requests will be made to us uh, for certain things to be done. Uh, we're going to look at the criticality of the request in terms of whether it meets the, the, um, the regulation in terms of uh, um, a house repair, um, roof repair, or maybe some busted pipes or something that is critical for what we are doing now. Um, what I do know is that uh, there has been some requests that has been made for critical work to be done uh, to fa facilitate this operation that we're doing now and those, well, that, is, that, that has been given the okay to go ahead. Uh, so I'm not sure if you're referring to that as a sector, but um, requests are being made uh, by individuals for certain things to be done, and some of them are considered, some again are, are not, based on the criticality of, of the request. Okay, I, I, Mikey, I, I, Mikey, I, I accept that. I have a Mikey, hold, hold on a second. Um, I just wanted to add here to ACP Prince. For example, um, with the banks this week, um, they have been granted permission um, to engage in construction because they have to install the plexiglass uh, barriers to protect their staff and the customers when the banks resume operations on Thursday, Friday. So that's a typical example of a case where permission has been granted for construction to take place. All right. Thanks for that clarification. My second question has to do with the border compliance. Um, can you speak to that a bit uh, in terms of whether or not you're getting people to cooperate with regards to the, to the border restrictions, one, and uh, added to that, who can present themselves to the borders without having um, written authorization to do so? You know, sometimes situation may just come up um, on the spur of the moment. So can you explain to us what sort of scenarios would be permitted to go through without a written permission? Okay, thank you very much for, for that question, Mikey. And I think that would give me the opportunity to speak about an incident that we had not too long ago. And I think it may have hit social media. I, I may not have mentioned it if you didn't ask the question, but I, I'm going to raise it just to kind of give you an idea of what is happening. Now, we have had, uh, I would say, perhaps the fullest cooperation when it comes to the border or the parish borders, um, um, restriction. And we have not had much challenges with that because um, the persons that are allowed to move, which are the essential workers, you can move from any from parish to parish because you are an essential worker getting to and from work. So those we've seen happening without any problem. But we, what we have not seen is just persons leaving the parish to go and shop, except for the St. David's uh, parish who are authorized to go to St. George's to shop. But we had a scenario not too long ago. Um, fortunately, that individual was um, an essential worker and had a, a situation where he had to move from his, leave his work to, to traverse to another parish to take one of his family members to the hospital because of an emergency. And despite the fact that um, there were boundaries to cross, um, that, was, that was accommodated accommodated to the extent that um, it, 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 it reached to a point of a, an abuse of, of, of a privilege that is given, yeah? So we've seen uh, persons cooperating and working with us to ensure that the border restriction is maintained, but then you always have the case of emergency that will uh, always um, come up from time to time and therefore the border 
uh, situation has to then be accommodating to allow those persons to, to move to the emergencies. Um, as we know, we have the General Hospital in St. George's. Um, we have another hospital in St. Andrews. Uh, and then there are some medical facilities within the other parishes that may not be able to deal with certain matters. So when there is a case of emergency, then certainly arrangements will be made to accommodate persons crossing the, bo the borders. Uh, outside of that, and al along with the essential workers, outside of that, then um, there will be no uh, authorization for crossing the boundaries. Yeah, but that particular incident with the individual who moved through the boundaries, that person was accommodated as an emergency situation uh, to get to the hospital. Uh, and then subsequently there were some other issues that followed that um, um, we're still working on to resolve and to find the, 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 the cause uh, for what may have transpired during that time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mikey. I think we can begin to put a wrap on things here this morning. Um, gentlemen, would there be um, closing comments from either of you just to underscore points we would have made during the uh, press briefing this morning? Okay, I think I'll just grab the opportunity to close off. Um, while we were discussing here, a question that came to me via WhatsApp um, is to, or a query, is to clarify the gas days and the Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, um, those are the days set aside for em es essential workers only. Um, those other designated gas days for members of the general public, as indicated by Superintendent Cowen, would be announced at a subsequent date. And in relation to persons who are um, coming to do business within St. George and have to utilize the service of their vehicle, we do want to request of them to ensure that the protocols are maintained in terms of seating distance within the vehicle and you are also advised to wear your mask or appropriate face covering. It is something that we would want to admonish and to ensure that we restrict community spread by all means. So in us, each and every one of us playing our role, definitely I think we can move towards having further regulations being relaxed. Um, that is, and it's also subject or contingent on our level of compliance and the way things turn around. If we are seeing things moving in a more favorable way, then I'm sure that we'll be well on our way to returning to a state of normalcy. But again, I want to take this opportunity to thank the members of the general public who has been very, very cooperative um, and adding, given the level of support that is required at this time to ensure that the delivery of our service remains at its optimum. So I want to thank you again and looking forward with great anticipation for your continued support. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Superintendent Connard. ACP Prince? Yes, thank you again. And um, I, I just want to take the opportunity once again to commend the general public on the support that they have given us over the last two weeks um, and to solicit the support again for the next week that is ahead of us. Um, we've, or we anticipate the, the, week, the week ahead is going to be challenging because then there will be so many movements in and out of the city, but as you do so, we want to encourage you to practice the, the, um, the safe distancing and the protocol of covering your nose and, and mouth uh, and the best way possible. Um, uh, and of course, we want to also um, encourage our officers who are on the front line, the policemen, to hold strong. This, not, this is not going to be forever. Um, we believe that the, 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 the time is coming when all of this will be um, something to be remembered, uh, but hold strong. We we are the ones that are tasked with the responsibility of holding things together. In this time, let us continue to do so, and let us trust that um, that our God Almighty will help us to do this and to and to be safe while doing it. Um, I also want to um, to make the point that um, the RGPF is accommodating to individuals who are willing to do certain things that the that the Act or the regulation allows. You need, of course, to send us an email through the RGPF COVID ops at gmail.com or the uh, RGPF or COVID ops at rgpf.gd. Um, those are the emails that you need to send your requests. Uh, it's a challenge for us to pro process the thousands of, 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 of requests that we've, we've gotten. So if you know you want to do something two or three days from now, this is a good time to make your application. If you want to do it 
today and you send your application today, the possibility exists that you may not get the permit. So we want to ask you to send your request early, at least at two days adv in advance, uh, so that you can get a timely response. So again, we want to thank you for your, your help, your support, uh, as we look forward to the few days that are ahead um, and, and hope that we do not get additional uh, COVID cases in our country that would cause things to take a different turn. So we're moving good, we're doing well, let's keep it up. Thank you. Thank you very much, ACP. Superintendent Cohen. Thanks a lot again, Phil. Uh, I just want to, in closing, just reiterate a few points. I, I want to make sure that when we leave this press briefing, there is understanding as to why the doctors, the nurses, and the police officers have given those that specific day to shop. Um, I explained earlier on, but I think I omitted to say this, which I think I want to say now. Amidst all of the essential workers, there are frontline essential workers. And the doctors and the nurses and the police officers are considered frontline essential workers. And that is the reason why that day was given to them. Um, we spoke this morning and we said nothing about face masks, although we, sp we spoke about maintaining the physical um, distances and we talk about all of the protocols. If you've noticed from all of the press briefing that we have given, we have not arrested very many people for face masks. In fact, I can only think of probably one case. The IRGPF will not continue to put emphasis on arresting for face masks, but we want to implore the public that it is critically important that you wear your face mask once you're in public in keeping with the regulation. We urge you to do that because this is one of the mitigating factors against the spread of the COVID-19 virus. So we want to urge that you do that very, very strongly. As we wrap up, I want to say something that is not in keeping with what we spoke about, but it is of critical importance. We are in the dry season and people continue to burn. And I just want to implore on the public that we are in a no bond, we have a no bond policy at this time of the year. You are not to be burning vegetation material or burning in general. And you need to seek permission from the RGPF to light any fire. And if permission is given to you, it comes with a clause that you need to inform and notify your neighbors that you're going to be burning. We have been having quite a lot of complaints and we we, we want to mitigate those situations happening. There are a lot of former neighbors who have respiratory illness and burning is affecting their health as we go forward. Both Superintendent Connett and ACP Prince thank members of the public. I did that a little earlier, but I want to take this opportunity here to thank you members of the media. You have been with us since this has started. Had it not been for you, we would not have been able to get quite a lot of our messages out. And you have been very patient. You have been very understanding. You asked the pertinent questions to be able to enlighten the public. And I want to take the opportunity this morning. In addition to thanking the general public and everyone else, the doctors, the nurses, I want to thank you, members of the media. Thanks for your support. Thanks for using your platform to be able to help us to be able to reach the people who need it to be helped to ensure that the message is loud, clear, and understood. As we go forward, we start seeing the, the easing of the restrictions. I am hoping, very hopeful, that, the, that in the not too distant future, we probably uh, will see all of the restrictions lifted, but we must continue to play our part and continue to adhere to all of the protocols that have been established, which has been put in place to ensure that we remain safe as a nation and continue to lead and fight this courage of the COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Superintendent Cohen. Now, just to wrap up, I'll quickly uh, review the changes that are being made um, as pronounced by the uh, Prime Minister and Minister of National Security, and which was further discussed here this morning. Uh, banking days this week on a Thursday and a Friday, all other financial institutions, including the Building and Loan Association, Credit Unions, MoneyGram, and Western Union, will also be open on those banking days, nine to one Thursday, Friday this week. Three shopping days this week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Karakou and Piti Martinique, those islands, they have a shopping day today, but from Thursday, when shopping days are announced, it will be for all of Grenada, Karakou, and Piti Martinique. Suppliers are out today 
Wednesday and Thursday to ensure that shops, grocery stores, and supermarkets are well stocked so that when the shopping days do happen on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, you, the customers, can get what you need. Also, farmers and fishermen have been allowed to ply their trade on the shopping days providing uh, their goods for members of the public. And gas stations open Wednesday and Friday this week, 6 a.m. to noon, for essential workers and uh, managers and employees of businesses that have been granted permission to operate this week. I thank you so much for joining the Royal Grenada Police Force for this press briefing here this morning. To you, members of the media, thank you so much for being with us. And to members of the general public, thank you for tuning in. Do continue to rely on the government as your official source of information. I am Press Secretary Philomena Robertson. Thank you so much for being with us this morning.